What he spent thirty thousand dollars on his M two ten. We're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode three, season two of Drone Therapy with the Bucket List Boys. I myself am Bill Thomas, and I run Coast to Coast Drones Facebook group and YouTube channel. Uh, and the now presently dormant drone therapy YouTube channel that hopefully will be active more soon. <clears throat> and I've invited some guests with me tonight. And that's why we kind of entitled this the bucket list boys. And I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Bill, the drone reviewer. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on tonight. Looking forward to the show. Looking forward to chatting with Ron as well. I um, want to give a shout out and thank everybody um, lately who's um, been subscribing to my channel. My growth has been incredible, and I attribute a, lo a lot to that gentleman who's hosting this show tonight, Mr. Bill. Uh, he really helped my channel get off on the right start, and I want to thank him for that. Um, I want to thank everybody for um, on, on both the uh, Build a Drone Reviewer Facebook group and Facebook page and the other the other groups that i have they're growing like crazy uh i want to thank you guys for that and want to give a shout out and congratulations to ken dono and billy kyle for passing their part 107s today and next mr ron brown thank you bill hello um i'm ron brown as he said um um ron brown on uh, youtube a youtube channel um i'm ron t brown on Facebook. I have a group RC world, which, um, cause I mean, these guys have groups too, but this group, we do drones, we do RC cars, trucks, we do boats, we do everything on RC world, just not drones. So that's a little bit different from the other channels. Um, I've been flying drones for a couple of years. I'm a, I was a, been a hobbyist photographer most of my life. So I come from a photography background. Like I've started flying drones, not necessarily to fly, but the photograph at first, but now I've got the love of flying building there uh, you know along that too so um I, I, just a shout out to a couple mates of mine who have kind of been on the journey for me a couple of years perth west rc is dave grima he's from australia he's almost in everybody's group he has a you know large um youtube channel he reviews products and bourbon cruise that's uh mike cruise from uh, north carolina he also uh, is in a lot of groups and uh he flies all sorts of drones uh Check his channel out to Birdman Cruise. Okay, enough jabbering. Back to Bill. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ron. Something that I wanted to do, Bill kind of brushed on it a second ago. I, I wanted to say congratulations to Mr. Ken Dono on getting his 107. And, and yes, Mr. Billy, I can almost see the peer, Kyle, for passing his 107 today. <laughs> And uh, I hate that he dropped his bird in the drink, but lessons learned. I, and I can see we got Rick Halber in the chat. We got Rich Beard in the chat. We got Dronescape Imagery. Hello, hello, hello. And what we were going to talk about tonight, as everyone knows, Hubson is seemingly trying to bridge the gap between the toy grade and entry-level selfie drone like the Spark. So... We're going to talk about the Xeno. And to start off with, since I've already harassed Mr. Dono and Mr. Kyle, uh, we're going to, I'm going to let Ron take over for a minute. He's got a brief history on Hubson. And then we're going to get into what we think about speculation on, okay, I've got a Spark. I'm thinking, am I going to sell my Spark and get the Xeno? And if so, why should I? So with it, I'm going to give you, the floor to Ron, and he's going to tell you all about Hubson for a little bit. Ron? Hello. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep this brief here, but uh, Hubson, the Chinese company, was formed in 2010. Uh, they employ around 500 people and around uh, 100 engineers in the R&D department. Their first drone was the H107. It was like a tiny little, um, you know, completely manual drone. Um, then a couple of years later, they came out with H109, which was like a, a Phantom, but probably a Phantom 3 clone. Um, but I mean, brush motors, HD, gimbal, you know, um, it was a, a valid attempt. Um, but their breakthrough product came in late 2015. It was the H501S. It was a, a small GPS drone. 
um, that had a like a two megapixel um, 1080p camera on it, and it sold in about the two the two hundred fifty dollar range. It was a real breakthrough. This came before the Mavic. Uh, you know, a small. It wasn't foldable, but it was a small. You know, drone that had a GPS, and um, I think it may have been the first one of the first toy drones. It was definitely the first small toy drone that had GPS, and he also quickly came out with a five hundred two. Uh, model which also a GPS, but it was a brushed motor drone, and the 501 was a, was a brushless. Um, in fact, as a prop here, I have a. This is a H4 Desire. Um, this is an A216, but it looks just like a 502E, which again is a, a brushed um, GPS uh, drone. And this has actually Wi-Fi FPV comes with apps. So this is like a little bit of a advanced. So I think this came out earlier this year. But uh, I mean, this thing's super lightweight. If you own any any of the DJI products, this thing like doesn't even weigh anything. But um, so that kind of and, and really all this happened at the end of 2015, 2016. And it really didn't do any advance except maybe put out some you know small little toy drones since then. So the first big step forward is the Zeno, which is coming out. It should reach uh, the people that bought in the first thousand about the mid November. But again, it's the first real advancement and they've never put out a, a, a drone with a really good camera. And they've always had like, you know, um, the drones have been good, but the cameras have been the fit, the point of failure on most of them. But this may be their first real attempt to put out a, you know, a really um, good camera that and people can be proud of the video they could take. Um, we'll, we'll get to the specs in a minute. I'm going to throw it back to Bill Thomas now. Well, thank you very much, Ron. I, I, that was interesting to hear. But I, I honestly, I've noticed in the chat some people were talking about, you know, a lot of people. I, I have looked into Hubson, and and with that lead in, I'm going to tell you kind of why I had not gotten one. I, one of my good friends, Dan Drone Worship Sampson, he's got a great channel. He's a good guy stuff. He kind of had some issues with Hubson, and I was like this close to getting a 501. And then all that went on and you know how it happens when you get in and it wasn't Dan's fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. I just changed my mind and I bought the, it was a pro mark was my first drone. And I'll be honest with you for an inexpensive Kmart or Walmart drone. I love that thing. It took great pictures. It got me interested in the hobby. It made me want to get a better drone that took more, the better pictures. And it, it's kind of like, um, <laughs> kind of like, I don't know how many of you guys and gals out there worked on a farm learned how to drive on farm machinery. It kind of reminded me, I was thankful that I had learned how to fly on a more difficult drone to begin with. And because it made it easier because I bought, you know, MJX bug series and, and things like that. And that's enabled me to, to do, to do those things. So with all that being said, and now we're talking about how the Zeno is going to be Hubson's big entry into the market. I want to ask, Mr. Bill, the drone reviewer, after his, you know, in looking into it, what he thinks about it, Bill. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question, Bill. And, and one of the first things that hit me, I watched a couple of videos on it, and people were comparing it to a Mavic Pro, and I'm like, get me a brick wall. Let me hit my head against it a couple of times because the, the, no, you're 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 off base here, and I and I don't know where you're you know physically looking at it yeah it does resemble it a little bit but that's not what this is intended for it's it's intended to compete with the spark and it's going to give hubson a name it's going to it's going to it's going to it's going to rank them up there they're going to they're, they're going to rise up with this um you know if they, if they can get it out like ron said like in the middle of november this is going to be a winner for them especially when Christmas comes, they'll, they'll, they'll sell, they'll sell like hotcakes. Uh, I, I don't, everybody, people, people are going to buy them left and right because it is really, to me, looking at the toy drones and, and I, and I've dabbled it in a few and have looked at a few. It looks solid. It looks like it's well built. And like you mentioned, it has a real camera with it. It's not, it's not, you know, it's a 4k camera, 30 frames per second. I mean, this is, this is getting in, into into DJI territory, and for the price point that they're looking at, the, the, in 23 minutes of flight time, I'm not going to steal all, all the thunder here. But that 23 minutes of flight time, uh, th this is this is a winner. It, it really is. 
I just want to give a, re a quick shout out. I can see Rick in the chat, Mr. Gaz in the chat, Brian, Mr. True Drone Reviews himself is in the chat, Dronescape Imagery LLC. Thank you guys, everybody, for showing up and chatting with us and talking to us. If you can holler at some friends and get them in here before we really get into this Zeno chat, it'd be really worthwhile because we're going to, we've been talking to some people. Ron's helped me get introduced to some people and I'm going to turn it back to him for a minute before we really get into the, um, uh, heavy discussions about the specs and everything. Uh, he was one that kind of introduced me to some people. I, I Sam Lee is on Facebook. He's the CEO and stuff. He's been posting a lot of stuff about it. It's, it's really, really cool. And uh, I'm really grateful to Ron for, you know, turning me on to it and, and helping me look into it and everything. And with that, I'm going to jump back over to Ron and say, what do you think about this thousand meter Wi-Fi range? Thanks, Bill. Um, this is um, this is really a big deal here because uh, there's, there's a lot of toy drones out there that um, could go a thousand meters, like the Bugs 2, which is a very popular um, toy drone. Uh, it could fly a thousand meters, but your your Wi-Fi FPV goes away after about 200 meters. So you're like flying on the blind, or you're modding it with a little AIO camera, like a 5.8 or something. So if they if they can actually get a thousand close anywhere as close to a thousand meters of FPV range on Wi-Fi, that will be you know just just a deal breaker on this thing. No other toy, you know, drone maker has has even come close. Um, and that'll really make a be a viable product. I mean, basically, you'll you know you'll be able to fly well beyond line of sight. Um, so again, that that that's a real breakthrough if they can they could do it. I mean, I, I don't want to be too much of a fanboy here until I actually have it in my hands. But uh, what do you think, Bill? You know, I, I agree with you, Ron. Um, you know, looking looking at the way things are with that, um, I'm really uh, I'm really impressed with what looks like i mean from the video and from everything that i've seen so far the quality of it, it looks fantastic i mean you know it really it it looks it looks solid it, you know i don't want to use the word uh, you know i don't want to call it dj dji esque um you know, if that's a if that's a word if i can kind of use that but i don't want, i don't want to say too much but it really it makes you think of a drone it screams drone right away and one of the things that I saw that I liked immediately with this, and it's one of my complaints, and I wish DJI would have taken care of it, is the arms fold out straight out from from it, you know, both the front and the back. And I really like that. I think Hubson hit a home run when they did that because, to me, one of the pain points, and I kind of wish DJI would have would have done something about it, is with the Mavic 2. I mean, the 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 back the back arms. They still fall out and under. And, you know, it's like how many times I've flown it, how many times I know, Ron, how many times you've flown your Mavic Pro, you know, having to get that out again and to remember that. I mean, that's just to me, you know, you know, I, I, I wish DJI would have done something like that. But but for Hubson, I mean, for, for the design, for what they did and everything about this, I mean, it really it really screams like it's going to be a home run to me. Uh, Bill, it's funny. I, I've, I've, like you said, I've flown my Mavic Classic. I'll call it at this point countless amount of times, and I still like don't don't get the arm thing right without thinking about it. It's still not a natural motion yeah. to me. It's a thought process every time I do it. Yeah, so you, you got a good point. You got to think. You got to think uh, before doing it, and it's like, oh, oh my gosh, am I going to break the darn thing? You know, but when I want just getting, you know, unfolding it and getting it out to fly. No, he's not. He's not in the. He's not in here. You all keep talking. We've lost a puppy. Okay, uh -oh. uh, Bill. Um, yes. He's right here's here. an, another good uh, thing I wanted to bring up. You, you mentioned your show the other night about the waypoints, or you know, in your recent videos. This has um, waypoints, you know, built right into the app, and it's the same app that you use on the toy hops. It's like the one I just displayed that again. And those waypoints, they're not like you don't have to fly them first and fly them out. You just basically go to like a Google Map, and you just you know, just press them right in. So it's going to have, um, I, I know that from said the previous app here that the waypoints are going to be, I mean, just, just, you know, one bing, 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 and, and you're flying waypoints. No, no, no setup, no, no flying them first. Um, yeah, that's it, a it's, it's, it's what the DJI fans want. 
Yeah, I mean that's a pain point with DJI is you got you got to fly it and then you set up the waypoints and I'm like no that's DJI has it all backwards. Hubson has it right. I mean you want to make you want to make your experience you want to make it easy as easy as possible and Hubson's doing that with this. I mean you know being able to just you know do this do this do this do this and then it's done. I mean that's golden and I, I wish I hope DJI takes a lesson off of that. Glad to see all the new people coming into the chat. Thank you very much. As you've been hearing, we're talking about the Hubson Zeno. Uh, something else, a couple of things I've noticed. Uh, they're giving us a 700 gram weight without the prop guards. As they've been talking about uh, a max flight time of 23 minutes. Uh, and Ron's got a surprise. He's going to tell you here in a second when he noticed that they were selling the batteries already and their price point. And then, of course, Bill noticed another point about how long it takes to charge those batteries. Uh, something that I had noticed, we had gotten a couple of different uh, specification sheets from Hubson. And from, Sha from Shally. Figure out this field of view thing uh, about it saying that it's adjustable from 83 to and you can so we were assuming that that was the the crop ratio so you would get your 720 your 1080 and your 4k it also it, it the paperwork says something about a focal length of 3.3 and so i'm curious about that if anybody can teach me what that means anybody go for it guy tell them about the batteries ron all right. Uh, sorry, I can't help on the uh, on the focal length. We have to uh, dive into that a little bit. But the batteries are already available to pre-order at the uh, Hubson website. I believe they're thirty dollars, and uh, I, I don't know when they will ship, but they're already available to order. And the nice thing about Hubson over uh, the other uh, toy drone companies, I think they're the only drone drone toy drone company. Sorry, that um, you they actually can order from their own website. Almost every other toy drone maker, you have to order from one of the places like Banggood or Gearbest, but you can order directly from um, Hubson Drones, which is uh, which is very nice. But um, uh, the, he was talking earlier about the batteries that uh, Bill had seen that it take, takes three hours to uh, charge the battery up, um, which, you know, for a lot of toy drones do take uh, uh, much longer than DJI products to uh, charge up. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, but uh, it's nice that it's affordable and you still get the 23 minutes. But um, sorry, I don't have more specs on the battery. But um, the good I thing is I they're available with order. About that. When you started bringing it up, Ron, um, what if they're going to sell a fast charging port with their battery somewhere down the line? <laughs> 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 uh, in a toy drone world, there's no such thing as fast charging. But uh, I hope you're right. I'm almost wondering though. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, what is okay? So that's what the thing that was confusing me was. We were talking about it. Basically, has the same type of sensor that the original Mavic had in it. Plus, Ron, you were talking about the action cameras and all that stuff have the same thing too. Mm -hmm. That'd be a typical in a GoPro GoPro knockoff that had that Amber L. It's like you find that in your, you know. Um, uh, like a Xiaomi or uh, a Yi or uh, name me any of the knockoff cameras. We all have them all. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. They all have the same processor. Like I said, they're all, you know, they all run off the same. But it's a good processor. It's a good solid processor. It, it, who you know, at least the the current dro toy drones, yeah, nobody knows right. what processor they have them because it's probably a no name. It's a generic. It's it's the cheapest thing they can buy off some parts maker. But now they have you know something with a real brand name a track record so. yeah I, i'm looking at the chat and it's like everybody's like a thousand meters right yeah where everybody's kind of saying the same thing it's kind of fun. oh I, i'm doubting them too yeah until, until i see it go a thousand meters i'm 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 skeptical I'm, I said, no, no fanboy here i'm skeptical well the thing about it is is we were also talking about this earlier you can get that drone right now from anywhere from three hundred dollars to three hundred and seventy dollars depending upon when you want to buy it and so it's going straight for the spark. It's got a three axis gimbal on it. I don't know for sure if we know what kind of um, SD cards it needs or if it has internal storage. Or do you know anything about that, Ron? I, 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 I haven't seen it said that claims to have internal storage. So I'm guessing it, 
<laughs> it uh, goes with your standard SD card. Uh, it goes it would be at least 64, possibly 128. I haven't seen those specs yet, but nothing would be less than 64. So probably class uh, D too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, even if it would run less than that, you wouldn't want to do that because uh, yeah. you know it would slow down the recording and you know the, the processing well, 4K back. So be worth anything anyway, because it's not right. Right. You want to get the fastest memory card. If you're going to record a 4K, you want to buy the fastest memory card you can afford. But yeah, like Mike was talking about in the chat too, he was talking about how right now DJI kind of owns the market. But this drone coming in right before Christmas, and I got a feeling that Hubson's, because they're going to be in like Fry's Electronics, they're going to be, they may even try to work out some kind of deal with Target. So it, it nice. well could be, but I got a feeling that you're going to see that drone in stores before Christmas, and it's going to go headlong after Spark. Oh, Has anybody... Too. Yeah. Has ahead. anybody ever seen a Hubson drone sold in a retail store? I've seen them in fries. That's the really? thing I can say. Okay. I've never seen a Hubson on a shelf in a, in a retail store. Yeah, yeah. I, I can go uh, the down in Renton, uh, the fries in Renton. They'll have like 10 different models of Hubson on the shelf. Explain what fries is to anybody that doesn't live on uh, west of the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. I know what a fries is. I've been in one, but most people have no idea what you're talking about. Well, the, the thing about it is, is I didn't know about it until I moved down here. <laughs> 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 Is because I, I spent most of my life in Virginia, and then I came out here, and I said, uh, "Everybody says, well, how come you haven't come home to visit?" I was like, "Come out here one weekend, and you'll find out." <laughs> <laughs> I love it out here. I just love being on this coast. I don't know what uh, it's. Fries is what? the Fries is the greatest electronic store ever. It's like Best Buy, Circuit City, Compu. They all rolled into one. Like um, literally, literally, and yeah. they take all of those stores and they put them into one gigantic store. Right, right. And there's even like there's even like a cafe in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, <laughs> it's and the food's real. okay. The food's decent. <laughs> I'm uh, on my okay. way, Bill. So, something I was wanting to ask you, Bill. Yes. We were talking about this. Is there can you think of anything that DJI might have in the works that could potentially be something that could be competition for the Xeno? Uh, yeah, um, there, there's strong rumors or about a spark too, and uh, they're very strong rumors. And you know, I can tell you now, if Hubson makes their target and gets this out mid November, like Ron is saying, you know, it'll be here before Black Friday. It's gonna, it's gonna own that kind of segment of the market. People are gonna be saying Spark what, and everybody's gonna be talking about Hubson Zeno in this, in this price point. And especially, you know, if initial tests, you know, with the thousand meters, if that proves out to be true, it's going to be it's going to be lights out for the spark for at least until DJI comes out with a spark too. It's going to be lights out for them. I just I have that strong feeling. Bill, well, I know I, I know this isn't a, this isn't a uh, spark show here, but how 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 deep a discount do you think you'll see in a spark? During his Christmas season, since it's already down at like three ninety nine and Best Buy with a controller, do you see deeper I discounts see, coming for the holidays? Oh yeah, I see. I see them going down to maybe like two ninety nine, maybe one ninety nine without a remote. Um, maybe remotes for like you know seventy five dollars, just going just absolutely crazy to try to sell them. And what's interesting, I know you know Bill, you mentioned you know that you saw Hubson's at Fry's, um, you know. What really surprised me was, and I caught this, was DJI Sparks at Kohl's. Okay, that just right. kind of blew me away. Seeing right. that, that they that they're that they're selling them there. I mean, it didn't surprise me to see DJI Sparks at like Target, but I saw it at Kohl's, and that was just like, well, wait a minute, uh, Kohl's. You know, it, it, that didn't add up to me. But you know, it's really out there. I mean, out of all my groups that I have on Facebook. I get at least 20 to 25 people re requests a day for people to join my spark group. I mean, it's around 1500 right now. It just keeps growing like crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something Rick just said. He'd never, never had a bad hub syndrome. So I'm going to be straight up. I'm, I've never had a drone. I didn't like, I've had some drones <laughs> that fly kind of strange, but I've never had a drone. I didn't like. 
because I would try and I would try and I would try. <laughs> well, let me give you my dying, but I'd keep trying. <laughs> well, Bill, let me give you my E-Sheen E58. You know what that is, don't you? I, I just, I've had drones that, that really didn't fly worth the hoot that I would just literally mess with and mess with and mess with until I got them to where they could fly for five minutes. That was that was just something for me. It was fun for me. As I said, I've never met one I didn't like. Well, that even the ones that flew away and didn't come home either. <laughs> <laughs> that nothing could be like, another, nothing like walking in and telling your wife, she sees you walk in with the remote, just a remote. Honey, did something happen? No, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> it is um, to change it back, change it back to the uh, the subject for a second. Um, yeah. Bill, how about have you seen the Unique's got a new drone out? It's called the Manus. Yes. Uh, uh, Brian Singleton, who was on here earlier, True Drone Reviews, he just posted a video up today, like a first flight, and it's a five hundred dollar product, and it has four K on it, but it, it doesn't have a gimbal. It relies on uh, image, you know, electronic image stabilization. Um, I don't know how they're going to fare in this market because they've got a product that's over a hundred dollars more than this Zeno, and it doesn't have uh, you know uh, any type of gimbal on it outside of ESI. So I, I don't know how they're going to fit in this market with the Zeno. Well, John brought up a good point. He was talking about the last few Hubsons that had been produced were you know, lackluster. There wasn't really any, it was just like they pressed another mold and spray painted it differently. Yeah. Than it did. No innovation for two years, basically. Yeah. He's, but they're, they're actually trying. It's, I, it looks to me like, like, especially, you know, you've had all tail come out with the Evo. It's like all, they've all decided, okay, the only way we're going to compete with DJI is if we put all our eggs in one basket and roll the dice. And that's what they're trying. This is Zeno's like, okay, I mean, excuse me, Hubson says, this is how much money we have. We can't produce a $1,500 drone and make money on it. Maybe let's do a $300 drone. And this is going to be one hell of a $300 drone if it works. Mm -hmm. And on the back end, Bill, I think um, uh, Hubson's competing with uh, the other uh, big toy drone maker, um, uh, MGX, who has made a lot of successful bugs, bugs two, bugs three. They have a bugs, what, uh, uh, Bugs 3 Pro now, I, I, and they've really moved in on Hubs' territory over the last year or two with a lot of new products. I, I think this is as much to stay ahead of MGX as it is to catch up to DGI. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, the, the thing about the, the Bugs line, though, is still is still very, I mean, for lack of a better word, because the, the Bugs 3 Pro is still built on that basic Pro frame. It's not been modified much. You know, and then the, the, what is it? The five is very similar to the mini and the a hybrid between the, the mini and the, the two frame. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you, you, you don't, you do have a bugs too, Bill? Yeah. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, okay. But, um, I, you don't have five, but I have a five, I have a hubs of five of one. I have a bugs too. And they're basically the same. Quad really the same. I handle a lot, but I, I'd probably tell you I prefer the Bugs Two over the Hubs of Five One. I know that'll be a fifty-fifty split, or I, I'll get hate for saying that. that I mean, the Hubs of Five One seems to have a little bit better camera, but I kind of like the way the Bugs Two flies a little better. Yeah, you know. So just making a point that again that they're 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 competing as much to stay ahead of MGX as they are to catch up with. Oh yeah, definitely. I think the Zeno is meant to 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 say, okay, we're ready to play with the big boys. Exactly, and I think back at MGX now at their headquarters, they're 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 probably getting the engineers. You got to build us something like that because yeah. we're about to be left behind with the Bugs Two series. Yeah, Brian. Brian, exactly. Brian said MJX has to up their camera game. They, they're the yeah. I, I've never had the GPS model, so I don't know how it sticks. I've seen the videos and stuff. Other than that, they do make a a very very sturdy platform. But their cameras do stink. I mean, their bugs too. You know, all all the all the bugs. I mean, the bugs three. You put your own camera on it, but uh, the other ones, the cameras all stink. Yeah, exactly. Pro pro in quotes, John. Pro. <laughs> <in quotes. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the, the probe is probably their biggest failure so far, unfortunately. But um, I'm sure they'll bounce back. Well, that, that I think that this uh, really and truthfully, I'm hoping I'm hoping that this has got in it what they're saying. They've not really given us a whole boatload of information. Like, like the most I had found was, was that there was uh, the, there was a variance between the field of view that they told us. The original one said seventy nine point eight degrees plus or minus three degrees, which would be defined by the user. And that was where I came up with the, when I was, we were talking before we came on that it was, maybe it's just to go from 4k to 1080 to 720. And it's just a crop and that wouldn't be that big of an adjustment in the software. But other than that, it's just, it, it seems like a, a miniaturized Mavic. And I, I know Bill, you're not wanting to say that, but it's just, it's very similar to that because that's what we thought the Spark 2 was going to, our Spark was going to be like a very f small foldable, you know, Mavic style. And now here we've got this. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Hey, Bill, you, you, you know these specs better than probably anybody. Um, the uh, video resolution on the Xeno is 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. How does that compare with the uh, Mavic uh, 2 um, Pro or? Yeah, back to pro. That I am not. I am not sure of that, Ron. I'd have to look that up. Oh, sorry, I put but, you on the spot. But, no, no, no. That's, that's cool. I, I don't know either. No. <laughs> that's why we're here. Does anybody in the chat know the comparison of the frame rates? As as well, to well, I mean, the, the, you know, the frame rates. This is probably only is thirty. Where of course the Mavic uh, Two has variable frame rates yeah. up to. Uh, well, no, it doesn't have 60. That's a big complaint. It doesn't have 60, but it has 24 and 30, I'm sure. And and you could go down to uh, 1080p and get, what, 120 or 240 slow motion on the uh, Mavic 2, I believe. I don't know. You guys have the Mavic 2. I don't. I, to be honest with you, I have flown my Mavic 2 two times. The weather here, we're going through our seasonal. <laughs> and so, actually, I could have flown today, but... Like I said, we had some things that needed to be taken care of here first. And so I didn't get, so hopefully, uh, and something tells me that, and forgive me, but I'm going to use the scientific term. If I don't paint on or stain on the deck tomorrow, I might get neutered. So <laughs> I'll fly really early tomorrow. <laughs> By the way, that's a, that's a beautiful deck you have, Bill. Oh, and we're, we're thrilled with it too. We love it to death. Uh, and, you know, but yeah, I can't, we can't, I can't wait. And, and your suggestion, Ron, as soon as I can figure out how to do it, yes, I will. I will host some, some drone therapies from out there. <laughs> and next time I get out West, we'll, we'll get together and do a, like a, a live uh, drone therapy with two of us in the same spot. That would be great. Well, I know that Ken, Ken has told me that he's going to come out here and literally drag me out of the house so that I will fly somewhere other than the backyard. Oh, Birdman's <laughs> in the chat. Birdman's in the chat. Just want to hey, Mike. How you I'm doing, Mike Cruz? Active tonight. Holla, holla. Birdman Cruz from RC World. But listen, back to some some more uh, specs on it. The uh, the Xeno has panorama mode, which, um, I mean, they showed the little video of it. It looks like it's doing the uh, flyaway thing. But also, I've seen seen the panorama mode. They showed the thing, like, like well, like the DJI's were just, it moves along and takes, you know, pictures consecutively, I guess, stitches them together for you. Well, they don't say that, but um, that will be interesting. Well, it's that's interesting you talk about that, Ron, because I noticed when I did um, when I did the, the panorama mode, when I when I experimented with the Mavic 2, how the drone positions itself and it's and it's moving and it's taking the shots. And I actually captured that. I had my wife shoots my videos. Of, mm -hmm. of like the drone and I captured that and it's just real interesting how the drone turns and, it, and it's doing that and it's doing all the processing on board before I mean when you pull it out the SD card it's ready to go right right process right in the phone yeah yeah and it's amazing I, it, I mean that's been that's that was on the Mavic uh, uh, classic it's on the spark too yeah it's on the spark too yeah, yeah. thank you very yeah. much dronescape posted the Mavic 2 Pro 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160 at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. All right. So that's the same specs as the Xeno then. Yeah. 
That's amazing. So I mean, that's, amazing to Zito has it. Wanted to say howdy, howdy to Richard Palmazano, and glad to have you in the house. Hello, glad Richard. In the house. Uh, Bill. Yes. At this wonderful CES event in January that we're possibly thinking there might be a spark, too. Might there be another drone? There might be another drone. There might be a, a, <laughs> a bigger a, drone. A bigger drone. And it, from what I'm hearing, it's going to be very pricey. The Phantom might 5. Might it have interchangeable lenses? Yes, it might have interchangeable lenses. And it also might be weatherproof, too. Oh, so, so, so if, if, if somebody can just about see the pier, they'll still be safe. <laughs> <laughs> they won't have to. They won't have to bite it in a drink. I, I I may have to go watch that just to see what happened. I mean, that would. I know that had to have killed it. Because all I saw was the the picture on uh, Twitter where he had the gorilla pod wrapped around the steering wheel and it was pointed towards him. And I was like, <laughs> "What happened?" And everybody goes, "Billy Kyle dropped it in the drink." Billy Kyle dropped it in the drink, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> 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 poor billy if you're out there billy sorry well that he'll he'll get another one and i'm sure since he's a pro now he'll make enough money to get four or five or 50 more so he'll just get more I'll, use out of zoom now and if you watch this billy kyle get your degree before you quit don't quit school first get your degree then go <laughs> do this for a living <laughs> Please. Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> yes, definitely. Hmm. Hello, 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 everybody. Yep, John's liking the weatherproof. Uh, like I said, Rich is in the house. Zach's in the house. Uh, we have been talking about the upcoming Hubson Zeno, the new 4K foldable drone, very similar to the DJI Mavic, the original. So that's what we've been talking about tonight. We've thrown in a little bit of DJI, but we wanted to prove that we're not just one horse ponies. That's why we're talking about hubs. <laughs> Anything else, Ron, you want to talk about? You want to bring up? Uh, um, you know, back to some of the features, it has a line fly mode, which I think is tap the fly, which is uh, outside, you know, not too many uh, other quads besides DJI have like a tap the fly feature, do they? No, not that I know of. I think I don't know how. What? What all, is Brian still here? Brian, does the Mantis have like waypoints and stuff? <laughs> they, they did. I don't think he's got to uh, test them yet. Um, he kind of kept the first flight kind of basic today. He had some oh, yeah, uh, he was about some, hawks, some hawks flying, some hawks flying over him. It's like I was telling him, I said, I said, go home and get some rest. And I was like, never mind. I know you. You won't get any rest. <laughs> <laughs> and he just laughed. He said, I don't even sleep. Also, the Xeno has image tracking, um, you know, where you can tap the person on the screen and, and follow along, which, um, you know, most of the tool drones just go GPS off the uh, controller. But this has real image tracking. I'll be honest with you. I don't think Hus Hubson wants us to view this drone as a toy i don't think so i think they want us to see it as you know like a selfie drone like the spark and okay so brian said no it does not have the the line like or, or waypoints like that so that's actually pretty cool too no i agree with you bill i i think that i think that hubson wants to say you know we're making a statement here they're they're wanting to put their their footprint and say you know we're playing with the big boys with this one well, yeah, exactly. And and I really and truthfully would love to see a true U.S. manufacturer of drones because I know damn good and well we've got enough people here and enough technology to where we could build something good and it's, it's we need to get off our backside and get it done. Well, that's a good point that you brought up. Um, and I talked when I I'd spoke by phone with Ken Dono today and I have been looking at a drone called the Teal, T-E-A-L. I don't know if you've heard about that. And, you know, it has some pretty good specs, but the thing that's a kicker, because I, I believe if I'm correct, it's made here in the United States. It's it's very pricey. It's uh, $1,195. And, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, mm. 
you know, and I, and I was all excited about it. And then I saw the price and it's just like one of those uh, kind of thing, you know, yeah, really. and, and, and I think the problem, what you just talked about is trying to get drones built here in the United. I mean, you need boatloads of capital to get started and, yeah. and to continue. I mean, it, look, look at Autel, you know, they, they've had finally had some, I'll call it quote unquote, a little bit success with the Evo here, but it's 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 hard when you don't have that working capital behind you to to do a lot of the things that you want that say that a DJI can do, and you know you, you need that. And I think that's one of the good things, you know. That and, and you also have to look at labor costs too. I mean, I hate to say that oh, yeah. labor costs in China are a lot less than what they are over here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess what I'm curious about, Ron, you said that they had updated the software to actually show the Xeno, but I, I guess what I'm curious about is how, I don't see how without doing, you know, like a, a really major upgrade to, it may just look like it, but maybe they've done some major overhaul under the hood so that it's, uh, you know, able and more capable to handle that 4k footage and and do the crops and everything like we've been talking about i was just this weekend that uh, i saw that um, i have the hubs app on my phone because again i had some tool hubs that fly uh, on wi-fi and i got the alert and the app updated and one of the selections you could pick is a xeno but i did see that it added any features in any way outside of putting the marker there for the xenos i think there'll be a a, a future update to the app uh, when the Xeno is close to being released where they add extra features and maybe just for the Xeno or I was thinking the Xeno would get his own app, but uh, again, this is all speculation. All I can tell you for sure is the Hupson, the official Hupson app has the Xeno in there now as one of the choices. Just want to give another shout out, see some new names and people in the chat. Roadkill. Glad oh, Roadkill. Uh, Raymond Millwood, glad to have I'm you. Raymond. If yeah. I mispronounce your rain, it's because I'm names, it's because I'm too far from the chat window and my old eyes aren't seeing good. Hence the name <laughs> of the list, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Three glasses uh, uh, show here. Yeah, that's right. Well, I just the, the reason I thought it was so cool, there's some other people that do it, some younger boys that I've noticed that call themselves the bucket list boys, and I'm sitting here going, Wait a minute. We actually are in bucket list territory. We're doing stuff because we we're like, man, I want to do this before I die, and I'm going to do it. Today. <laughs> well, one of the things that that I, I, I one of the things about the Zeno that that I like in noting, I mean, Ron had just mentioned um, a few minutes ago about the cost of the batteries. I mean, th think about it. Thirty dollars for a battery, okay, and the Mavic Two batteries are one hundred and thirty-five dollars. I mean. Think about that. <laughs> we might have a price hike in another three days. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, but Bill makes a good point. You could buy the Zeno uh, for, say you get it with the first thousand, 319. You buy two extra batteries for it. Now you're up to like uh, $380. And now you have... Uh, uh, 23 times three back, you know, flight time for uh, you know, something special for $400. I'll be right back. Okay. So now you, I mean, you make a good point, Bill. You could, for not much money, you can have a lot of flight time with this. Oh yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing that I think I really like about this, Ron, is, you know, they're advertising 23 and realistically I'll subtract three. You'll probably end up getting 20 from it. And I think that's yes. fantastic. I mean, you know, in, in comparing it to the spark, when I first got the spark, and you know and i was running it you know to get 15 minutes i i was i was really lucky if i got 15 out of it and almost oh, yeah. kind of the same thing i mean the, the mavic air it's probably about 20 or so because you know i had it for a couple of weeks from florida drone supply let me borrow one to test and you know that that runtime and see that's the thing with the small drones it's that runtime you know and you you've got something you're capturing it, you're getting a good shot, and then all of a sudden you get the warning, look, the battery's low, and you gotta come back home. Right. That just... right, right. So that extra five minutes that uh, this Zeno gets over the um, Spark uh, will be uh, you know, a big advantage for it. Oh, absolutely. And you know, another thing I, I think we wanna talk about 
here is looking at the design and you know you know the, the the mavic pro was designed to be portable and hubson did the same thing with this this is designed to be portable to be able to throw it in a bag uh to be able to throw it in um you know whatever kind of gear that you have you know if you're going away for a weekend bag you know it's it's meant not to be obtrusive and and i like that is that your ticket to elton john yes this, this, this little, little, <laughs> i knew that subject, but i knew I'm that there he is oh no focus 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 <laughs> there you go it's elton good john. <laughs> and we're all old enough to remember elton john is prime well, That's right. the thing about it was was so cool is there he's calling this Farewell Yellow Brick Road. And it just so happens that my wife and my favorite Elton John song is Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a lot of Elton songs, but that's right. my favorite. And it was what it was my favorite album when I was like about twelve or thirteen years old yes, also. I love a great it. album oh, like yeah. that. That first oh, instrumental yeah. song at the beginning. That album's great double album, almost good all the way through. Okay, here's 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 a good one for you guys. Okay, um, I got Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Remember uh, that one? One of the best albums of all time. Okay, now if you looked on the back of that album, all right, and and my mother was always very careful while I was growing up when whatever music I brought in the house, you know, and right. she she heard Elton John, there wasn't a problem, and she right. saw and she didn't look on the back. If you look on the back, there's all kind of nudes that are drawn. And oh, on, the, no. on the back of the graphic art in there, but um, we're digressing from Jones here for a second. Right, but right, right. The, one album, the one album she wouldn't let me have. Listen to this one, Bill Thomas. Okay, <laughs> she would not let me have Frampton Comes Alive. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, that's one. That's one of the best albums of the seventies. Oh. It is. It is. And because somebody, she was an industrial nurse, and somebody at her plant said. That Peter Frampton said a bad word in the song. Oh, <laughs> <did he? laughs> well, flash forward, I mean, that was like the year, that was right around the time I was going to college, freshman year. And my mother gives me some money and said, You can walk into town and get yourself a blanket if you need to. I walked into town and got Frampton Comes Alive. I got back to my dorm room, I opened the windows up. I put that on as high as I could get it, and <laughs> I just was I was rocking it out. Very cool, very cool. Uh, wow, good story, Bill. Good story. Yeah. Okay. So okay. okay. Well, let me let, let, let me get us back on track for a second, Bill. Okay. E either Bill, I'll uh, ask you this question. So we we I think we covered the Zeno in, in, in as much detail as we can at this point until we get more information. Let me ask you guys, who is the Zeno for? Ooh. Who's a Zeno Ooh. meth for? Boy, you asked a good one there, Ron. Yeah. Think about it first. That, that's a good. At, with those capabilities and that price tag, you, you've got a broader range than the Spark does. Wow. You're right. I agree with Bill. Spark is basically a selfie drone. We all know it has limitations. We all know the two-axis gimbal gives it limitations. And you really can't get it to do the same type of stuff you can do with a Phantom or a Mavic. So this drone is going to give you the portability of a Spark, the size of the Spark, but it's also going to give you the footage and the breathtaking video that you would have from a Mavic Pro at what? A, a third of the price of a Mavic Pro. Or, so, or at least a Mavic Air. If not a Mavic Pro, at least a Mavic Air. Yeah, right. And we'll still have the price of a Mavic Air. So mm -hmm. this is going to be the entry level, uh, what hobby grade drone or camera drone? Yeah, I, I mean, like like Bill H said a few minutes ago, I don't think anybody that's considering getting the uh, the Mavic Two Pro or Zoom is going to get the um, the Zeno in its place. It's a whole different level. But if the Ma the Mavic Air, you know, you look at that, okay, you know it. The Mavic Air is still better because it's got the sensors or whatever, but you get it's less than half the price. Now, that's that's where it's going to steal from the Mavic Air, not the Mavic Pro, because that's a whole different, you know, buyer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, here's the thing. I have a Spark that I've been trying to sell. Should here's I keep the, yeah, my Spark good. or should I sell it and buy the Xena? 
And that's a question that I've been been going, hmm, because I had somebody message me yesterday that offered me like $25 less than what I had it priced for. And I okay. was like, okay, I can have the Zeno if I want it. I just have to sell the Spark. And so now I'm in a dilemma. Do I want to sell it and get the Zeno or keep it and skip the Zeno? Well, here's what here's my advice for you, Bill. I, I would I would wait till like say Ron gets it and gets it up in the air. <laughs> seriously, seriously, I I, I would do that because you know we're, we're 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 going on projections here, and we really have. I mean, Hubson had a great promo for it, but you know we're not really seeing any video from it. Uh, we're not really seeing you know pictures from it. Um, you know, we see it flying, but we don't see any of that. So yeah. for me, you know, personally, um, if it was on my, if it, it was in my radar kind of a thing, I would want to see something from that. I would want to see, you know, what that video looks like. I want to okay. see, you know, you're I have that seen the video from the camera. Okay. Okay. It, and, and I'm going to be straight up from what I've seen. It looks like, um, in close, it's really good definition complete 4k but as you pull out it's got a central focus and then it's very soft focus around the edges you lose a lot of detail a lot of clarity so there's 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 a um so they've put up a couple of test videos on one of the obscure hubson sites that's got the like ron was talking about earlier the the line it's they're testing the line feature and something else and you'll see it as it draws out the guy's on a beach and it pulls out from him and the central focus is really really good really good to find a really good definition the color quality is extremely good but there's a really like so, so you got this much hard focus and then everything else gets blown out worse and worse and worse and worse and worse i wonder if that could be a bit rate problem bill i wonder if it has like a low bit rate um you know, transferring the, um, I, I don't know, but that's like I said, I had, I will, I'll, I'll look for it again and I will send you all the links to that page that you can. Yeah. Look I know at. the one you're talking about. I'll help you find it. It's, it, yeah, I but, think it's the, you saw what I was talking fly about. One. Ron. Yeah. Oh, you definitely, you put it out to me. You're right. It, it does look soft when it gets, the drone gets to the, you know, the end of its flight and you're looking so, back at the scenery, but I don't um, know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, if it's a, if it's a software issue, I don't know if it can be fixed. What coming? What's he saying? Uh, yeah, true. But like I said, like because Dreamscape was talking about, we you know we got the hundred megabit transfer rate and everything. So yeah, that's that's phenomenal. It's going to be. But so and that's something else we don't know about the transfer rate. Right. I hope it's a hundred bit, but we don't know that. Yeah, it may be well. Even even if it's sixty to sixty five, that's not going to be bad. But I'm that's just decent. I, I'm just curious. I, I wait, one of the shows, well, we've got a fifteen bit rate. A what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so no wonder we're losing all the, the video here. We're getting the, the but, yeah, but but Bill H makes a a good point that uh, on paper the Z is better than the uh, Spark, but. Is it, it, you know, is the product that arrives better than the spark and specs are better on paper? It is, but again, proofs in the pudding, as they said when we were young. Yeah, you know, the, the other thing too, you guys had talked about it earlier the range. I mean, is, is this going to hold up? Is it really going to be a thousand meters? You know, is it really going to hold up and, and give us that, that kind of range that would, you know, it would, you know, blow a spark away as far as the range is concerned? You know, it, that, that's an unknown too, because you know, it, you may get the 500 meters and it may, you know, you, it may die out and hit that automatic return to home kind of thing. Yeah. We don't know what kind of drain it's going to put on that battery. We don't know how fast it's going to suck it dry. Yeah. Right. I mean, we, we do know that the hubs and the, the 501s, I mean, uh, I I've seen like Dustin Dunhill take, take his 501 out. Uh, I don't know, you know, to over a thousand meters in Hawaii. <laughs> so, I mean, Hobson does have the technology to get out beyond a thousand meters. It's you can see it easily on um, on YouTube videos. People mod them, get them out a couple thousand meters. I'm sorry, they're bringing it up again. I can see Brian said I just go ahead, go really lose his Mavic too, and I'm sitting here going, <laughs> I can almost see the pier. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I bet he cut the audio off though. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Francesca now. Now, now, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway. So I so I get I guess Bill and I are advise you not to not to sell your spark yet. Oh no, I I'm I, I any you Ron, you know, Bill, you know, as many pictures as I've taken with my spark, I love my spark. It's it's like part of me. I've even had my sons look at me and go, well, dad, you've got so many drones now. Why don't you just kind of hand that one off to us? And I'm like, well, yeah, I could do that. Uh, how about taking this old cheap Troy drone? <laughs> what, what, people don't, go, yeah. gee, what people don't know is the, the Spark has a great camera in it. Like if you, like, I, you know, I have a couple of DJI drones and the, the JPEGs coming out of that Spark are as good as the Phantom 4 and the... Uh, oh. Uh, uh, Mavic uh, Pro Classic. I mean, yeah. again, the, uh, said it has a very good camera and 1080p. If you put the the Phantom 4 or the Mavic Pro on 1080p, Spark's video is just as good. It really yeah. is. You know, the highlight of the Spark for me is, you know, I'm looking at some of those pictures that Bill takes, Ron. It, it, they're just they're they're incredible, and that's the thing that always blew me away about the Spark was 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 was, was the JPEGs. They're just they're just. The detail on them is just insanely incredible, and like you said, you can put it up against a Phantom Four Pro or a or a Mavic, and and it looks it looks just as good. Yeah, so um, it's it's really the it's really kind of the, the hidden gem in the DJI line because it's so cheap, and as far as you know, camera quality and stuff, you know, it's uh, it's very competitive, and uh, for a lot of people that are photographers more than to drone pilots it would easily fit in your camera bag and you could go up and get, you know, nice shots that you can't get from the ground. You don't need to fly thousand meters or fly uh, 400 feet in the air or whatever. You just need to get above the building and the trees and to get to capture your photos a lot like Bill, Bill Thomas does on his shots at his backyard. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, yeah. You only have to go up like 25 to 50 feet. And you can get great pictures. John just brought up something really, you know, makes a point in the chat. And this, this is the thing is, it just so happens that the reason that you're hearing about so many DJI drones over water, hitting the water is because what 85% of the drones owned are DJI drones. Any drone with an optical flow sensor that's going to get over a reflective surface or a bland surface that's not really got anything for that camera to grab onto is going to have trouble and it's going to get disoriented and it may very well hit the drink. It just so happens that there's a lot more DJI drones out there. So that's why they're saying, oh, it's a firmware thing. It's no, it's it's the optical flow getting confused by the reflection or mm -hmm. it's getting confused by there's nothing, no variance for it to grab onto. And that's Mike, what that's, Mike Daniels said last night when I had him on my show, Bill, that there's a point, I think he said 33 feet is when it changes from a GPS barometer to the optical flow sensor. And I mean, it makes perfect sense. And um, I'm going to be doing OBS and you're, I'm going to probably ask you for some advice and getting that set up. Right. But, you know, people that said that they, they watched his video today, they said, wow, because you know, it's it, it. You see the drone coming up, and it says three feet, and then it gets up to about ten feet, and it still says three feet down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Because yeah. it's confused; it can't get it's any confused. Yeah, it's okay. It's like me; it has bad depth perception. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to clarify, Bill, Mike said thirty-three feet above. You want to say thirty-three feet above the border with right. your uh, with your DJI optical flow drones? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've. You know, I mean, I fly over the water all the time, but I mean, I'm not skimming the water. I stay up, you know. Oh, I, I, guess, I guess I stay up that or higher because I've never had an issue. Well, I got to I got to share a funny story with both you guys about this. OK, um, last Easter, my wife's family's over and they say, oh, you know, you're, you're a drone pilot. Let's let's see you fly your drone. OK, so I you know, this is this is the Mavic Pro. I take get it up. And as you guys know, you know, I have a lake behind our house here. So I get it up and, you know, I'm almost all the way across the lake. And, and they said, um, how do you bring it back? And I said, well, I could fly it back or I could hit this button and it'll, it'll come back. So I hit the button and then my wife's nephew's talking to me and he says, Bill, he says, I think it's going to land in the water. 
and <laughs> it was like about it was it was at least it was no more than than five foot off the water when I noticed it. I hit the throttle up. You know what I hit instead? And I think you guys know because how close they are on the on the app. I hit the land button instead of the return to home button. So it was <laughs> it was going down, and I'm like too busy telling people about what's going on with the drone. So fast forward to this year in January, my son brings his girlfriend down from Ohio and I kind of do the same thing, but I actually filmed it is how to fly distracted because I was focused on the drone and still able to answer questions. I mean, it, and that's, that's one thing you have to remember, you know, especially if you're out over water or really anytime, you know, if you're flying distracted, you know, it's stuff, bad stuff's going to happen. That's why, you know, you keep your eyes on the drone, you hold the controller, you know, you don't, you know, you, you try to talk to people minimally when you're, when you're doing that. Right. Just like distracted driving, same thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's anytime my wife's in the car because she's always telling me what to do. So. <laughs> huh. Okay. That's a good story, Bill. Give a quick holler here and we've been on for an hour and i'm extremely grateful but my phone's going to start ringing in a minute and i got to go back to work so okay. i just wanted to say i'm extremely thankful for everyone that's been here tonight i'm extremely thankful for the two gentlemen that joined me tonight and i've had a thoroughly good time and i would really welcome the privilege of having you gentlemen back again so with that being said, I would like you all to consider that. I want to say thank you to everyone in the chat. And I will now pass it over to my co-hosts for them to say good evening. Bill. Bill, I can't thank you enough for having me on tonight. This was an absolute pleasure. It was great chatting with you and with Ron. Um, you know, Bucket List Boys coming up with this name. This is fantastic. And let me tell everybody out there, Bill Thomas is one of the best people out there as far as drones are concerned. He he's all he's all about him, but you know what? And this is, <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. He's he's all he's all he's all about you know drones, but he's all about you know there's enough there's there's enough of a playing field for everybody to stand on here, um, you know. And let's just you know let's enjoy each other's channels. And you know, there's a lot of us out there. We all a lot of us have YouTube channels. A lot of us do that. You know, let's enjoy each other instead of, you know, instead of looking for ways to, um, you know, to fight. Let's coexist and, and let's do it well, because, you know, when we when we stay unified as far as, you know, drones are concerned, um, that's when everybody wins. Every every everybody's a winner when, when we do that. So, um, you know, and, and that's one of the things I like about Bill. He he just he's he's so positive and upbeat about drones all the time. And that's where we all need to be we need to be positive and upbeat because you know what i think it's the greatest hobby that out there right now i really do and thanks again bill and you can count on me anytime you want me back i'm here all right thank you very much and rick i don't want you to get confused before i let uh, ron say his good nights we're on a two-week rotation so make sure that you let everybody know because we're trying not to just overwhelm everybody and kill each other with because we all have regular lives so we're going to do this every two weeks so that we got enough information to jam into a show and give everybody a good show. And with that, I'm going to say good night again. I'm going to turn it back over to Ron, let him say his good nights. Ron. Uh, thanks. It's been such an honor to be on the, on the show with, uh, you know, Bill Thomas, both bills. Um, you know, again, it was, it was absolute pleasure. I think we had a good show tonight. Um, I want to thank everybody in the chat room for being a part of it. I'm sorry. I didn't get the, you know, communicate more with you in there. Like, uh, again, my eyes seeing the small things in there. I'll try to reach out to people separate. But again, thanks for tuning in. And, um, you know, I want to recommend everybody go to Facebook and join Coast to Coast Drones and Bill the Drone Reviewers channel. And Bill has many other, both Bills have many other groups too. So I only mentioned their main groups. But if your interests are, you know, more uh, narrow focus on a certain drone, you can join their other groups too. But, uh, both of them, they have great groups. Uh, most, of, almost everybody in these groups in there are nice people. They help out, friendly. Um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, um, say more about both of them. And uh, also, everybody out there, uh, as Bill mentioned about being a kind of a brotherhood of uh, road flyers, I like everybody to think what they can do to communicate with 
the FFA and all the lawmakers in trying to keep um, the drone hobbyist rates in place as much as we can going forward. Um, I don't want to get political here in the show at all, but I just want, <laughs> you know, drone flyers to stand up, you know, um, hobbies to stand up for their rates, you know, going forward since there's a lot going on, you know, with the FFA and uh, a lot of new laws coming and going. So just keep that in mind, everybody. And um, I want to say good night, and uh, I hope I, I hope I return on the show again. I've had a great time tonight, and uh, I'll pass it back to Bill for final word. All right, thank you very much, Ron. Thank you very much, Bill. I think that this is I'm, I know, like I said, this is normal for me. That's why we were trying to do things a little bit earlier before. But uh, hang on, she's gonna grab it. I know she will. She's got it. All right. Um, thank you again, everybody. Like I said, we're gonna do this every two weeks. And I'm glad the guys agreed. I'm in agreement. I think we're going to do season two is going to be the bucket list, boys, and we'll just come up with a new topic every two weeks. So tune in in two weeks' time, which is going to be Wednesday. Oh, no way. We're going to do a Halloween episode, guys. Uh-oh. We got to come in yeah, costume? On Halloween. All right. All right. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you folks soon. Good night.